Praise the Lord, Philip's Temple. We give honor to the Lord this morning, amen. amen. How many of us are sold out? Your mind is fixed and your heart's made up. All right. Let, we're going to have our announcements. March the 2nd. Thank you for the meals on Thankful Thursday. It's provided by Run For Your Life Ministry. Uh, Brother Ronnie, Ronnie Anderson for leading our 30 minutes our 30 minute workout before worship. So we want to thank, we're thanking, okay. March the 9th, the Board of Christian Education and the Godwin family will provide the meal. Sister Carla Williamson will lead the 30 minute work, workout before the worship. March 16th, um, the meals, the meal will be provided by the greeters, caring by sharing, the ministers and the guardian angels. And Sister Ruth Stevenson will lead the 30-minute workout before worship. Amen. On March 19th, 60 minutes of fitness after worship will be led by Sister Diane Covington. March 23rd, the men's fellowship and the stewards will provide the meal. Sister Diane Covington will lead the 30-minute workout before worship. On March 30th, the ushers and the personnel committee will provide the meal. Sister uh, Kimberly Walker and Sister Rochelle Asbury will lead the 30-minute workout before worship. Beginning on Saturday, March 11th, uh, the athletic trainer, Sister Carla Williamson, will begin at no charge a low-impact fitness class at Phillips Temple on Saturday from 11 a.m. to 11.45 a.m., and you can contact Sister Carla for any you know, more information. On Sunday, March 12th at 10.45 a.m., Reverend Crepania Rogers will be preaching at the Serenity Prince of, Peach, Preach, Peer, Prince of Peace Church on East Prospect. Prospect Reverend Norris is the pastor. On Saturday, March the 18th, the Men's Fellowship will be meeting and they'll be having breakfast and whatever they do. I'm sure they're going to be lifting up the name of Jesus. On Sunday, March 19th, there will, um, there will be baptism. So if you desire baptism, please call the church office. Also on Sunday, March 19th, the minister's Christmas dinner will be, um, they'll be meeting at the Longhorn Restaurant in Castleton immediately after worship service. You can uh, contact Reverend Rogers to sign up and for more information. And hopefully it won't snow. <laughs> on Saturday, March 20. Fifth, there's the Taste of the States. This is sponsored by the missionaries. Y'all know it's going to be some good food there. Amen. On Saturday, March 25th, also, there will be the quarterly conference with Reverend Leisha Agnew, our presiding elder. And I'm not sure what time that's going to be. Monday, April 3rd, Pastor Lester will preach at Greater St. March. Mark, y'all excuse me at Greater St. Mark Baptist Church on East 38th Street. We know this is where Reverend Joy Thornton serves as the pastor. So please mark your calendars. Uh, the Phillips Temple Easter play, adults and young adults to participate in the play, please sign up in the vestibule after worship service. And for more information, see Sister Tanya Plummer or Sister Lily Evans. Um, the Guardian Angels are looking for more members to help with the security of the church. Please contact Brother Bill Russell, and the phone number is listed. We're upgrading our audio and video equipment. Please pray about a sacrificial gift to support this vital ministry to the church. Did I forget? Oh, let's not forget about Thankful Thursdays. All the people that are coming next Thursday on March the 9th at 7 p.m., we will we'll have Bishop Leonard Scott in the Rock Community Church. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Let me see where it is. At this time, I'd like to welcome any visitors to the church. If you're in the house, please stand. Are there any visitors? Amen. Just family. All right. Praise the Lord for you. Now we're going to have prayer by Minister Denise Davis. Praise the Lord, church. Thank you, Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. 
uh, let us rejoice and be glad in it. As we go to the throne of this right now, I just thank you. Oh, God, I thank you for the things that you've already done. So glory and honor, they all belong to you. For you are the way, you are the truth, and you are the life. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Oh, God, we plead the blood of Jesus over every situation at hand, Lord. Those that are sick, those that are in mourn, those that uh, need guidance, Lord, we ask for a special blessing. Oh, for, the, for all of us, Lord. Oh, God, you are the way. You are the truth. Oh, God, we don't get healed if you don't come heal us, Lord. Oh, God, we can't, you, 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 got, you got us back in the right relationship with the Father. Oh, thank you, sir, for what you've already done. We bless you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Church, stand with me as we recite the Apostles' Creed. Philip's temple, in whom do we believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, and the Lord of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From this he should come to judge the sick believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And now the choir will lead us in our morning hymn, followed by the scripture read by Minister Francine Cruder. Please remain standing. Good morning, Phillips Temple. How many of you all know that God never fails? I'm so thankful that God never fails. All right, page 239. He 
gives me victory. No God never fails. Just keep the faith and never cease to pray. Just walk upright, call him noonday or night. He'll be there, he'll be there. There's no need to worry for God never fails. No need to cry, no need to cry. Not afraid to die. I've got my Lord, I know he's on my side. Daily I trust him. Never shall I doubt him, for God never fails. God, God never fails. God never fails. He abides in me. He gives me victory. No, God never fails. Just keep the faith. And never cease to pray. Just walk upright, call him noonday or night. He'll be there, he'll be there. There's no need to worry, for God never fails. God never, God never fails. God never fails. He abides. Good morning, church. Our scripture reading will be coming from John 6, verse 50 through 59. And the scripture reads, This is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat of the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood, have eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he shall eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is the bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. These things said, I'm sorry. Amen. That concludes our reading for this morning. And may the church say amen. Praise the Lord. Let us now at this time join in our responsive reading in the sacrament of the Holy Communion. Amen. Let us stand. It's found in 609 in our hymnals. The invitation reads as thus.
ye that did truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. <coughs> Draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament of your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, together, Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and holy sorrow for these our misdoings, the remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and make that we may hereafter sing and preach thee the newness of life, and to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn to thee. Have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Together, almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires shown, from whom no secrets are hid. Clean the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. We may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Jesus Christ, Lord. Amen. It is very beat right in our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God. Lord, angels and archangels, and all the company of heaven, the Lord is magnified thy holy name. The Lord Jesus, 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 holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord, most high. Amen. At this time, let us welcome our music ministry, our choir, amen. Glory, Patre, excuse me. Peace to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, and now and everlasting, never be down in. Amen. So let's put our hands together and give God the praise this morning. For he's worthy. Let's welcome our choir and music this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord, Phillips Temple. Hallelujah. Glad to be here this morning. We are, I've come to welcome our new drummer, Daniel Reese, to Phillips Temple family. And to congratulate him on his new arrival, his new daughter. Danny, we're very pleased to have you. We want you to be welcome, and congratulations on your new birth.
Come on, let's give God praise. I just came to magnify the Lord. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. For this is the day that the Lord has made and I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. Come on and put those hands together and give God praise. For he is truly worthy of all of our praise. From the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same. Come on, he's worthy to be praised. Come on, let's praise him. 
while we have a chance. Come on and thank him today. Praise him in the sanctuary. Praise him on the drums. Praise him on the organ. Praise him on the string instruments. Let everything that have breath, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's a good God. He's a great God. And he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. He's a good God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, the Bible says Jesus, he was out healing. And the Bible says while he was out healing, they started praising him. And the people were trying to tell the people to be quiet. Jesus says, I got a plan B. That if you don't praise me, the rocks are going to cry out. How many of you know that you don't need a rock to cry out for you what God has done for you? We don't want Jesus to use a, pray, a, a plan B because we want to give God all of the praise that's due his name. Come on and give God praise today for he's worthy to be praised. Sounding mighty good. Amen. God bless you, choir. Hey, you know, that's Sister Benson. My God. God uses her. They used to say she, she's a little piece of leather that's well put together. Amen. She, she knows how to pull it out of her. Amen. Thank, thank God for Sister Benson. Amen. For her work and for her ministry. I'm so glad we're having a good time in the Lord. Because the Bible says that God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. It's, it's time for us to give. This is the first of the month of, of March. This is Women's History Month. Amen. We celebrate all the women. Will all the women please stand? Can all the women in the church please stand? Come on, man. Let's celebrate our women. Amen. Thank God for all of the ladies. Amen. Thank God for you. God bless you, all of the women who are here today. We count it a privilege and an honor just to celebrate you doing this month. That we thank God. And you know, James Brown said it's a man's world, but it wouldn't be nothing <laughs> without a woman or a girl. So I'm thankful for all of the wonderful ladies that we celebrate today. None of us would have gotten here if it hadn't been for a woman. Amen. That's how we got here, amen. So I celebrate our women today. We thank God for our stewardesses who look so well today, amen, and our missionaries, amen. We thank God for their ministry. As we're giving today, we, uh, the Bible says, reminds us that we're to bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse. So we give today because God has given so much to all of us. Uh, I want to thank all of those who continue to give and share in our ministry, for we recognize that God has called for us to be a blessing. The blessed of us have to help the rest of us. So God blesses us because we understand that it is the tithe that we owe, and it's an offering that we sow. But we owe the tithe because the Bible requires that we do this. But it's also not just about our resources. It's tithing our time, our talent, our treasure, and also our temple. We've got to take care of our bodies. So I want to invite you to continue today to pray about your tithe today as we give, as we prepare now to stand for our tithe litany, where we go to the word of God, where it teaches us how and why we are to give. As we all please stand for our tithe litany <clears throat> found in our worship bulletins. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruit of all of thine increase. Upon the first day of the week, that's today, let everyone lay by in store as God has prospered them. Will a person rob God? Yet ye have robbed me, but ye saying, Where have we robbed thee? 
and tithes and offerings together. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now here which says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. As we get ready for our ushers to come, we prepare to give. If you want to give electronically, you can. Cash out the dollar symbol, Phillips Temple Indy. Also on Giblify at Phillips Temple Indianapolis. We want you to support our ministry. Cash out the dollar symbol, Phillips Temple Indy. Giblify, Phillips Temple, Indiana. We thank God for those. Who also, the baskets, the, the men are caring for the tithes. The ladies for our benevolent offering as we give unto the Lord. We're so very thankful and grateful for you supporting our ministry. We ask for the uh, Anna Isles uh, that they will go first. That they would uh, follow the direction of our ushers that we would stand on the outer aisles and starting from the rear, follow the direction of our ushers, please. I'm chasing. Chasing after you, no matter what I have to do, cause I need you more and more, more and As we all please stand, all things come of thee. be seated in the Lord as our choir prepares to come back and bless us with another selection.
Hallelujah. 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 Somebody say, I'm too grateful. Somebody say, I'm too grateful to be hateful. I'm too grateful to be hateful. I'm too anointed to be disappointed. I'm grateful today. Grateful for all he has done. God, we thank you today for what you've done. Your word, God, reminds us that it's through you that we live, move, and have our being. God, have your way in this worship service. Come now, Lord, destroy every yoke, break every bondage. God, set us free in the name of Jesus. God, we know you are a healer even now, God. Heal right now, God. Your word says, oh God, that by your stripes we are healed. And God, we ask that you will lift up, bow down heads, oh God. God, comfort those in their hours of bereavement. Strengthen those, God, who are weak. And now, God, I pray, Lord, that as we prepare now to go into your word, speak, oh God, to our hearts, to our minds, but most of all, God, speak to our souls. I pray now, Lord God, that you would decrease me and increase thee. Burn out all iniquities, Lord, until there's nothing left, Lord, but thee. And God, we'll be careful and we'll be mindful to continue to give your name the praise. We ask it all, God, in the name that's above every name. In the name that's above our fears and frustrations. In the name that's above cancer and diabetes. In the name that's above high blood pressure and high cholesterol. In the name that's above HIV and AIDS. In the name. That's above sexism and racism in the name that every knee must bow and every tongue must confess. We thank you now in that name. The Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Just for a little while from the book of John chapter 6, which was read earlier. John chapter 6. I'm going to look there at verse 50 through... 53, there you'll find these, I'm sorry, through 54, 50 through 54, and there you'll find these words. The here is the bread that comes down from heaven, which anyone may eat and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I give for the world. Then the Jews began to argue sharply among themselves. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Amen. I'd like to preach, teach for a little while from this subject entitled, The Lord Is... You are what you eat. You are what you eat. I read a bumper sticker a while ago. It says, eat right, stay fit, die anyway. Uh, there, there, this, this old adage that says that when you were young, you lived to eat. However, as you get older, you learn how to eat to live. And there is a difference between the two because when you are young, you can eat whatever you want at any time you want. And usually you won't have any negative effects. I know growing up, I thought I, I had an iron stomach. I could eat anything. Yet as time has progressed, I am now more aware of what I eat. And I also try to watch the portion sizes of what I eat. For eating is very important to life. Although water is needed more than food to live, food is just as important to maintain a healthy diet. Food really is the fuel that gives us the energy 
to do what we need to do in life. Eating can also be described as what we take into our bodies and even into our spirits. Whatever we constantly invite into our ears, our eyes, and our mouths, we are symbolically eating it or digesting it, and it can either have a positive or a negative effect on us. There are healthy food choices and healthy environments that we can engage in in our lives, like reading inspirational books or, or reading our, our daily devotional or finding those spiritual blogs that you can use to increase your spiritual awareness. We can make healthy choices like going to help someone in need by volunteering in organizations and, and, and doing things to increase a healthy lifestyle for us. Right. Removing ourselves from those stressful environments so we can make and, and make a, a, a change in the way in which we eat and consume. We can change and get off of these junk food diets and both physically, emotionally, and spiritually, which ultimately lead to moral and physical decay. We have to be careful of what our eyes, our eyes see and what our ears hear because this becomes a part of what we digest or ingest that ultimately can have effect on the outcome of our lives. Today, on this day, we remember that 58 years ago, there in Selma, Alabama, was Bloody Sunday, where the representative, late Representative John Lewis was almost beaten to an inch of his life so that people could have the right to vote. And I celebrate that, Sister Lewis and your husband, you, you were there as a part of walking across the Edmund Pettus Bridge, that, 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 that they took the initiative to fight for our rights. And I say this because that during this Women's History Month, we've got to also remember the women who also work very hard so that we can have civil rights here in our, in our country. It is, it is this part that we have to be reminded that we got to even be careful of the, the stuff that we take in on news and on other information platforms because a lot of it is filled with junk to destroy us. There, there are those who are even now plotting, as the, the governor in Florida, who are plotting against us learning about our own black history, but more importantly, about American history of how we evolved as a country. I would say to you that, that the reason they call it being woke is because so many people have been asleep to our own very history. They, they have been asleep about all the things and accomplishments that our people have been engaged in. It was only a few years ago the movie came out called Hidden Figures, talking about the black women who were instrumental in getting a spaceship up to the moon because of their hard work and how they were ostracized, not just because of the color of their skin, but also because of their gender. But I want you to know that we've got to get rid of the filth, that we are all needed to make this world become better. We need both black and white, brown and yellow, all of us working together to make the world a better place. And I submit to you today to make sure that you make sure that you are registered to vote because our votes are very important. That's why they're trying to suppress the vote all across these 50 United States to destroy our voices to be heard about all of the injustices that are still happening here in America. Even here in Indiana, I'm, I'm concerned about taking uh, contaminated ash from Ohio and bringing it into Indiana. It seems like it's rather crazy to take something from the far east side of Ohio and then put it on the far west side of Indiana that's contaminated. We must begin to speak our best interest because if we do not, then it is because of our own lack of fighting that we end up in peril. 
preach Paris and I share that, I know and understand that sometimes it's hard for us to see that even in the church, we still have a voice, that we still have a voice to speak for those who are unable to speak for themselves. We still have a voice. When they can find money to give over to Ukraine, they ought to be able to have money to give to Indianapolis. We still have a voice and we've got to speak up because you are what you eat. So we have to speak. And the Bible declares that we have to speak. Now, as we look here at our text, now what can be described as one of the most universal foods is bread. Bread in itself is not glamorous as some other dishes, yet it is an integral part of a healthy diet when eaten in moderation. Jesus in our text today teaches us that he is the bread of life. And the first part to remember is that the E stands for effort. Somebody say effort. It takes effort when you're eating because eating is necessary. Each culture and region throughout the world has specific dishes in which each one of them has some type of bread attached to them. There are biscuits and rolls and buns and toasts and muffins and even crackers. There are all types of bread that the world uses. It's no wonder why Jesus used this universal food to stress how it is necessary for the entire world. Bread is something that is reasonable and it has the capacity to fill your stomach and to satisfy your hunger. Now please understand that Jesus was not talking about cannibalism, but symbolically when the Jews would celebrate the Passover, Jesus wanted them to know that just as God fed the children of Israel in the desert for 40 years, he's the same God that will feed you here and now. Jesus says, I want you to know that when you accept me as the bread of life, you will have life for eternity. In the text, Jesus is reminding them of their Jewish history, and he recalls about how Israel had to walk around in the wilderness for 40 years. And we learn that they had to learn how to wait on God to provide for their very needs. It showed up in a term called manna. And in the Hebrew, manna simply means, what is this? It was, what is this? It was the bread that God had sent down from heaven. Walter Hawkins wrote a song called, What Is This? That I feel deep inside. What is this that makes me love my enemies? What is this that makes me feel? Whatever it is, it won't let me hold my peace. But before bread can become bread, it has to go through a very unique process. It takes effort to make bread. And Jesus here in our text is saying that even when you accept me, there is still some effort on our part. So when you make bread, the first part of making bread is that you've got to gather wheat and then the wheat must be gathered, and then it's grounded up into flour, and the flour has to be prepared, and then water and yeast is added to the bread, and then the dough has to be kneaded and turned into dough, and after the dough is kneaded, then it has to be placed in an oven and baked. It takes effort to make bread, and Jesus says that in this life, you've got to exercise some effort in your life. Things are not just going to happen. You're going to have to make some things happen in your life. Jesus says to us today that just like bread had to, Jesus says that I'm just like bread. I have to come down through 42 generations. It was the effort that God put in it so that we could have salvation, so that you would no longer have to die. God sent his son, Jesus Christ, who would stamp out death by giving us everlasting life. And Jesus says that I am the bread of life. In other words, Jesus says, I am necessary for your life. I will preserve your life. I will keep your life. And the Bible says that it's in Jesus that we live, move, and have our being. And here in our text, Jesus reminds the disciples that your forefathers ate manna from heaven in the wilderness and they died. Jesus says that I am the bread of life. 
and whoever eats of this bread shall never die. Jesus' implication is that your body will die, but your spirit will rest with me in eternity. Just as when we eat now, it feeds our bodies for a short time. It helps us to stay healthy one day at a time. But eventually, it's not a matter of if we're going to die. It's a matter of when we're going to die. But when we eat the bread of life, death will only become a changing wound for those who eat this bread. Jesus says that when you take this bread, when death comes, it becomes a changing room where you walk in with mortality, but you come out with immortality. You walk in with corruption, but you come out with incorruption. You walk in with death, but you come out with everlasting life. Jesus says that when you take this bread, when you eat of this bread, the effort that I give will only be a changing room when death comes. But not only. Unless we understand that it takes effort for us to live by God. The next thing is it takes our attitude. Somebody say attitude. attitude. See, eating is, a, is, is responding to a felt need. See, we understand that we've got to eat because our bodies require food as fuel for our lives. So you've got to have the right attitude even when it comes to eating. You've got to have the right attitude. And I heard the choir singing earlier that you've got to have an attitude of gratitude. See, when a person is truly hungry, it does not matter what you have to eat. If you're hungry enough, you'll eat it. I remember growing up as a young boy in Chicago, and my mother would make beets, and she would say, boy, you're going to eat it because you'll eat it before it eats you. I had to learn to say that. She said, you don't get a lot of different choices. You eat what I put on your plate, or you just go to bed hungry. So you, after a while, you learn how to have gratitude about what, what people have do, are doing for you. So here in our text, Jesus is reminding them and sharing with the Jews how important it is that he indeed is the bread of life. For earlier in chapter 6, Jesus had just fit, uh, finished feeding the 5,000 with two fish and five barley loaves of bread. But then at the end of the meal, they still had 12 barrels left over so that they could have some doggy bags to go home. When Jesus says that I am the bread of life that will supply you with everything that you need, but you've got to have the right attitude. Jesus says I am the bread of life that supplies you with the strength to get some other bread or money. You know, they used to call money back in the day some bread. Jesus says that I'll give you the strength if you got the right attitude so that you can get, receive all of the resources that you need. See, with the right attitude, God will give you favor. With the right attitude, God will open up the doors. With the right attitude, your life can be transformed. With the right attitude, people will treat you better. With the right attitude, you will feel better. See, you've got to have the right attitude to get to the right altitude that God wants for you in your life. For even, even with the right attitude, God gives us favor. For even in the Lord's Prayer, Jesus taught us to ask God for our daily bread. Each day is a day of our sincere prayer that God will give us what we need daily. Jesus did not worry about tomorrow. He says, I'm just going to trust God for today. Because today used to be tomorrow. But because God has been faithful to me, I made it through yesterday to get to today. So I'm not going to worry about tomorrow. I'll leave that up to God, that God will supply my daily needs. So he says, ask God for your daily bread. That he'll supply us with our needs every day. Jesus says, in him is all of our needs can be met. And just like God allowed Elijah to speak to the woman and her son at 1 Kings 17, when he told them how God was going to feed them with a handful of meal and a cruise of oil, God will supply our every need. And just like God told Elisha 
in 2 Kings chapter 4, where Elisha was able to multiply 20 loaves of barley and some fresh grain to feed 100 men. Yet all of, all of those miracles where God provided and responded to a need, they all ended up hungry again. And then they eventually died. But Jesus says, however, when you partake of this bread, I'm going to give you everlasting life. See, and many times in life, it will cause for us to try some things on the world, yet it will not truly satisfy us. They are only temporary. Things like that are only temporary. Things like power, prestige, popularity, drugs, sex, uh, alcohol, and money are only temporary fixes to a real uh, emotional need. And the only thing that can fill the hole in your life is not more money, not more clothes, not more houses, not more clothes, not more this, not more that. The only thing that's going to fill us is our relationship with God Almighty. That's the only thing, thank you, that will sustain us. See, drugs will make you sick. If you keep hanging around it, it will destroy you. Alcohol will wear you out. Sex is only momentary. And you've got to be careful with that because a five minutes of pleasure can end up as nine months of pain. And now you've got a little baby to name. So you've got to be careful even when you look at your life. These things are only temporary. But you've got to put your faith and trust in Almighty God. So Jesus says you've got to have the right attitude as you learn from your ancestors that God sent manna down from heaven and he fed the multitude. Well, not only must we have the right attitude, not only must we have a good effort. Lastly, my sisters and brothers, the T stands for it's transformational. See, eating is something that's transformational. For eating implies an act of appropriation. And eating is something that is intensely a personal act. See, you can't eat for somebody else and they be fulfilled. See, you can't eat a steak and then expect for your friend to be full. See, eating is something that's personal. And Jesus says that when you take me, this is something that's personal. You, you, can't, you can't take me and then expect for your children to be saved. You, you can't accept me and then expect for your spouse to be saved. Jesus says this is a personal act, that it's a transformational thing that you've got to do for yourself. And Jesus knew and knows that eating is appropriate and is personal. Yet it is also transformational. See, many times the things in our lives that are traditional, they also can become transformational. Eating is something that is traditional, but over time, once we learn how to eat right, then it can become transformational. I know how many of us, we grew up on those certain diets. You know, you ate the pig from the rooter to the tutor. That, that, that's, that's traditional. But after a while, you've got to make some transitions in your life. You, you can't eat the same diet. I, I know our four parents ate like that, but they weren't sitting down watching TV all day. They, they, they were going out to the fields working. So when they ate meals like that, they were working it off. And, and they were also raising up their own food. They, they knew what their hogs were eating. They knew what they, the, the, the cows were grazing. They knew what they were feeding the chickens. But nowadays, we don't know what we're getting. That's why you got to make sure you pray over everything that you eat. So even though it's traditional, we also have to be transformational. And we see here in our text what Jesus says, that you eat of me, you will have everlasting life. Jesus reminds him what God had to tell Moses when the children of Israel asked, who sent me? God told Moses to tell them, tell them that I am has sent you. See, I am is a transitional, a letting us know 
of who God is. He says that I am the bread of life, that those who eat of me shall never die. This was a transition for those who we read here in the text, but there also a transition for us in 2023. Jesus says, I am the transition. When Jesus says that I am the bread of life, here in John 6, 48, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. In John 8 and 12, Jesus says, I am the door. In John 10 and 9, Jesus says that I am the good shepherd. In John 10 and 11, Jesus says that I am the resurrection and the life. In John eleven thirty five, 35, Jesus says that I am the way. Jesus says that I am the truth. And he says that I am the life. In John 14 and 6, and then Jesus says that I am the true vine found in John 15 and 1. And I'm so glad today that Jesus says that I am your company keeper. That when you're tired, I am your leaning post. When you're sick, Jesus says that I am your healer. When I'm in trouble, Jesus says, I am your lawyer. When you're down, Jesus says, I am who will lift you up. So he wants us to know that you are what you eat. So even today, as you get ready to come and take communion, I just want you to remember that I am the one. Jesus says, I am the one who woke you up this morning. I am the one who started you on your way. Jesus says, I am the one who put a roof over your head. Jesus says, I am the one who put shoes on your feet. I am the one who put clothes on your back. I am the one who gives you health and strength. And aren't you glad today that Jesus came down to be the I am? I know we got our phones. I know we got our pets. I know we got our, our this and our that. But I'm so glad that I got a I God that I can call him in the morning and I can call him in the noonday, that I can call him in the evening. And aren't you glad today that you serve an I God, that God goes wherever you need him to go. If you find yourself down, God says, I am there. If you find yourself uh, on the Isle of Patmos, God says, I am there. If you find yourself on a sick bed, God says, I am there. And because he's there, how do you know that with Jesus, uh, everything is going to be all right? Uh, I don't know what the future holds, but I know that if I hold on to Jesus, if I hold on to God's unchanging hand, everything is going to be all right. I don't know about you, but I thank God that he never gives up on me. He never throws in the towel, but he keeps on giving us strength. He keeps on seeing us through. And that's why I'm glad today to say thank God that I am what I eat. I'm going to keep eating his word. I'm going to keep eating and trusting in him. I'm going to keep eating and believing in him. Come on and give God praise. Come on and give him praise. That he is the bread of life sent down from glory. Come on and give God praise. Today, as we stand, there might be somebody here today who needs to come give me your hand, but give God your heart today. You are what you eat. Your effort, your attitude, your transformative to come and accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. To come and be a part of the body of Christ. You can join the church today. You can Come and be a part of the safety of Jesus Christ. I want to invite you to come. Don't let this opportunity pass you by, but come. 
while you have a chance. Hallelujah. Come now. Down from glory, many things you were on earth, a holy king, a carpenter. You are the living word, bread of heaven, sent down from glory. Many things you were on earth, a holy king, a carpenter, you are the living word. Bread of heaven, sent down from glory, many things you were on earth, a holy king, a carpenter. You are bread of life, sent down from glory, many things. You were on earth, a holy king, a carpenter, you awesome ruler, gentle redeemer. The living truth and what a friend we have in you. You are the living word, awesome ruler, gentle redeemer, God with us here. The living truth and what a friend we have in you. You are the living word, Jesus, Jesus, that's what we call you. Major born, but on a tree, you died to save humanity. You are the living word, Jesus, Jesus, that's what we call you. Major born, yeah, but on a tree you died to save humanity. You are the living word. Oh, 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 you are the living word. Jesus, oh, 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 you are the living word, Jesus, Jesus, that's what we call you, major born but on a tree, you died to save humanity, you are the living word. 
Come on, choir. You are the living word. That's what we call you. To say humanity, you are the living word. Jesus, that's what we call. But all the tree you died to say, humanity, you are the living word. As we prepare now to prepare for communion, we take this time where we examine ourselves. As we said that you are what you eat, and we prepare to take this communion. Remember, what you said by doing this, that you intend to lead a new life, a new life. If you don't intend to lead a new life, just put it in your pocket and wait till you intend to do it. Amen. But we're saying by we're doing this that we intend to lead a new life. A new life found in Jesus Christ. He said, when you eat this, you have everlasting life. So together, let us take now the bread. The bread represents the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's broken for you and for me. Together, let us eat it together. Also on the same night, Jesus told them to take the cup. Take this cup which represents the shed blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And you said by doing this, you intend to lead a new life. Together, let us drink it together. And let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As our stewards get ready to come to receive our receptacles, I know it was the blood, I know it was the blood, I know it was the blood for one day he died and I know come on he's coming back, he's coming back He's coming. Oh, yes, he is. He's coming back for me. For me. He hung his head. He hung his head and died. He hung his head and died. Uh, he hung his head and died for me. Oh, one day he died. And I know, and I know it was the blood. Uh, he's coming back. Uh, he's coming. He's coming back. He's coming back. For me. One day. He died. And I know, and I know it was. Come on, how many of you know it? I know, I know, I know. I know it was the blood. 
know it was the blood. I know it was for who? For me. One day he died. And I know, and I know it was the blood for me. Come on and give God praise today. Hallelujah. As we get ready to go, I'm so thankful my cousin is here. Good to see you, Susan. Amen. That's my cousin, Susan. Amen. Who's here worshiping with us today. And uh, I got a text uh, upstairs. Demaya, today is her birthday. She's 15. Amen. Amen. You know what? We're all of our, we're all our March birthdays. This is first Sunday. The, who's born in March? Who's who got a March birthday? Look at all our March birthdays. Come on, let's real quick. March. Happy birthday to all of our March birthdays. All our March birthdays who are here. Worship. Happy birthday to you. That's it. Happy, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday, all of our March birthdays, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy. Amen. As we get ready to go, uh, we want to keep in prayer uh, Sister Mary Black, the homegoing celebration for her husband, Greg Black, is tomorrow. Uh, what time is it? 11? 11 o'clock tomorrow will be the homegoing celebration for Greg Black. So please keep Sister Mary Black and family lifted in prayer. Amen. Also, we know on this coming Thursday is our thankful Thursday. Please join us at 6 o'clock, 30 minutes before workout. And then 6.30, we got something to eat. And we want to uh, thank God for Bishop Leonard Scott and the Rock Church will be our guest. Amen. We don't want to invite people to our house and we not be here. Amen. So we are excited about that. Did I forget anything else? Forget anything else? We're thankful and so very grateful. The men's breakfast is on the 18th. Amen. Thank you. All right. I forget anything else. We're thankful and grateful and so very thankful. I think we're ready to go. Oh, uh, Brother Tony, again, uh, your, your son here, your youngest son, amen. God bless you here, his wife, thank you, amen. So good to see you being here, amen. We're grateful for all those who are here. Praise God. Let's go. God, all blessings flow praise him all creed here below praise him above ye have praise God again for what our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, and most of all, God, what our hearts have felt, we say thank you. Thank you, God, for reminding us we are what we eat. Lord, we desire to eat of you. Feed us, O oh God, till we want no more. And now unto him who's able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his presence with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. And all of God's people sang in one voice, amen. Amen. Amen.
I want y'all to learn that threefold I'm in it. The threefold.